to retired Colonel Douglas McGregor, who joins us now. Sir, what, what's the strategy? Putin attacks a nuclear power plant. What's the strategy behind that? Is it just to intimidate civilians? Uh, the strategy uh, was not to attack uh, any power plants or the power grid. Uh, the Russians have very carefully avoided interrupting any power, no damage to communications, no damage to uh, any of the things uh, that are essential, like the water supply. What you're seeing is that the Russians have now driven what is left of the Ukrainian forces who are taking refuge in uh, population centers, cities, because they have no mobility, no air defense, no air cover, no logistical infrastructure. They are now mingling with the population, much as we've seen in the Middle East. Whenever we drove the uh, Islamists out of business, they ran into cities, used people as shields, the civilian population, and tried to avoid being annihilated. And I think that's essentially what's happening today with uh, the population being used by the Ukrainian forces to avoid destruction. Do you think Putin will pull what I would call a Grozny? Grozny was the capital of the, mm -hmm. um, of the this uh, breakaway republic. He flattened it when the civilians resisted. Yes. You're going to see this. I mean, is he going to flatten yeah, he, Ukraine? No, absolutely not. In fact, uh, he's worked hard to capture most of it uh, intact. Uh, surprisingly little damage, frankly, Stuart, much less damage than we inflicted on Iraq when we went into it either in 91 and again in 2003. Mm -hmm. Now, I think they're just surrounding the Ukrainian forces and they are annihilating them. And this is inevitable. Uh, and Mr. Zelensky, I think, is postponing the inevitable in the hopes that we are going to rescue him and we are not coming. President Biden has made that very clear. You think the end is in sight? <clears throat> Well, the end, <clears throat> the end of this phase is still a, <clears throat> a few days away. <clears throat> but the uh, first five days, uh, Russian forces, I think, frankly, were too gentle. Uh, they've now corrected that. So I would say another 10 days, this should be completely over. But the question is, uh, what is it that Zelensky is going to do? The Russians have made it very clear what they want is a neutral Ukraine. This could have ended days ago if he accepted that. And then they can adjust the borders. But the eastern part of Ukraine is firmly in Russian hands. But again, the Russians are not seizing territory. They're destroying Ukrainian forces. That's their focus. Colonel, it sounds like you don't approve of Zelensky's stand. Oh, I think Zelensky is a puppet. Uh, and he is putting huge numbers of his own population at unnecessary risk. And uh, quite frankly, most of what comes out of Ukraine is debunked as lies within 24 to 48 hours. The notions well, of taking and retaking airfields, all of this is nonsense. It hasn't happened. He's not a, a hero when he's standing up for himself and his own <laughs> people? You don't think he's a hero? No, I, I do not. I don't see anything heroic about the man. And I think the most heroic thing that he can do right now is to come to terms with reality neutralize Ukraine. <clears throat> this is not a bad thing. A neutral Ukraine would be good for us as well as for Russia. It would create the buffer that, frankly, both sides want. But he's, I think, being told to hang on and, and try to drag this out, which is tragic for the people that have to live through this. I'm inclined to disagree with you, Colonel, but, um, you know, we we'll see how this works out. Colonel Douglas McGregor, tough guy. Thanks for being with us, sir. We'll see you again soon. Thank you. Thank you, Stuart. Lots of different opinions on this show.